Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode here in MLB The Show 23. So in last episode we had the draft and unfortunately for us we just barely missed out on a insane player that was an 82 overall, a potential, like 99 potential as well. Um, so we just missed out on like a franchise caliber player but we had it still a solid draft I'd say. We drafted Johnny Almont with the fifth overall pick, and he's going to be a pretty good pitcher, I think. He might even get into the eight potential range eventually if we upgrade him a little bit, but you can see he was a pretty solid pick at the fifth overall spot. Like a 69 overall at 18 is really good. Like he's going to be jumping immediately to AAA next year, which is great. We also did get a couple other great pieces like Blake Smith. Uh, Carlo Suavez, I think it's pronounced as. We drafted this guy in the third round, and he's looking pretty damn good. 98 potential he also has some good solid attributes quite uh, uh all around i should say and yeah hopefully he's a good outfielder for the future of this team if he gets good development obviously he's only 19 so he does have a long ways to go still but i think he could easily make it to the mlb if he has good years in double and triple a and all that type of thing we also got sammy Pugh, who's decent vincent cho uh, Pedro Lugo and Michael Flutie these two guys not as uh, sold on these guys but they give us a little bit more depth in terms of our system so I'm okay with that but the rest of these picks I hope that all of them can make it to the MLB some of them are quite long shots like Pew who's a 45 overall but I really hope that a lot of these guys end up making it obviously Amont will definitely make it I think a lot of these other guys will end up making it too but probably in different kind of areas because I don't think Blake Smith is going to be maybe a starter Based on his stamina and whatnot, I feel like this guy might be more used as a reliever down the road, but hard to really tell. Maybe they'll get a lot of development in areas they need to, and yeah, solid draft for us. But like I said, we did miss out on an insane player who went to the Phillies, that being Ned Thompson, who is from Pennsylvania, ironically. And yeah, this guy's going to be a monster. 82 overall and 18 is nuts, and yeah, he's got great attributes all around, and obviously that 99 potential. We were just one spot away from being able to draft him, though, because he went to fourth overall because the first three teams missed out on him. So we'll see how good this guy ends up being for the Phillies, but, man, I wish we would have been able to grab him because third base is something we kind of need as well, so that would have been a great add. But at the same time, you got to think this guy would be demanding tons of money and we'd eventually lose guys like Cardenas and Sixto. We, don't win we wouldn't have the same type of depth players, or not really depth players, but the same type of players we do in our lineup nowadays because this guy would be probably getting a max contract or something like that so anyways that's what happened in the last episode i do have a couple comments to go over before we get into simulating the rest of the season and maybe getting through the off season depends if we're a playoff team or not but we got our first uh, comment from nick bucker barons oc he says good draft sucks to miss the generational prospect but at least you had a draft full of good picks Almont looks like he needs uh, two years, then he'll be an impact guy, and then the value through out the rest of the class. So, uh, yeah, that was a solid draft I'd agree with for sure. I do think Almont will be probably a very solid pitcher for us because obviously we got how McAllister's probably not going to be here super long term because he's already 28. Uh, but then we have like Bobby Hyde, we have Gomez, we have Morris, we have Poles, we have Silva. Like, we're building up a really built uh, built core of pitchers. Carmen Osuna, who we drafted last year. Um, Sparbori is okay as well. So we are developing a very, very solid pitching rotation for the future and maybe even a solid bullpen too. So I am very excited to see what all these pitchers could do for us in the future. Next two comments are from Michael Dose. The first one says, You realize that bunting does not matter at all because the DH is used and pitchers don't hit unless you have a two-way pitcher like Otani. And I didn't realize that uh, there was actually DHs in the NL, but he said that they just recently started using that. So uh, basically, we don't have to actually worry about bunting at all because we'll always have a DH in our lineup. So for example, Steiner there and Steiner there as well. But if there was no DH in both these leagues, then obviously we would be relying on our pitchers actually having to hit. And then that's when bunting would come into effect. And then the last comment from Michael says, An average full-time player is worth about two war, while an average bench player contributes much less, typically between zero and one war. Average starting pitchers are also worth around two war, while relief pitchers are considered superb if they crack plus one war. So uh, for relief pitchers, for example, like... Uh, 
I guess, for example, Doug Rubel, if his war, which his war wasn't good, right? It was 0.1, so if he cracks one war, it would be support, uh, superb, but right now he's doing okay, I guess, in terms of war. And then in terms of, like, bench players, um, they typically contribute 0 to 1 war. So, if, for example, Steve Schneider, what is his war at again? 0 0.6, so he's doing pretty decent in terms of uh, the uh, bench in that sense as well, so... There is that comment from Michael. And our final comment is from Crazy G. He says, we were so close. And yeah, it really sucks to not being able to get that crazy good player. But I do think we have crazy good players already as well. So like I said before, the cap situation would be much expensive down the road. Like, Sixo is making a lot of money. He's arguably our best player in terms of overall, obviously. But Cardenas is phenomenal. He's going to be demanding a lot of money eventually. Steiner's been really solid. Pinero has been okay as well. Like, I feel like we would probably sacrifice quite a bit of depth if we were to actually get Ned Thompson. Like, Pip has been okay, but we do need a better player than Pip maybe eventually. Uh, Trevino has been really good, so there is a lot of positives with this team. This team is also 55-58 and 58 right now, if you didn't see that. So there is a chance we could make it into the playoffs as a wildcard team, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Uh, because uh, we are currently we're six and a half games back so it's not outrageously bad but I don't think we're going to make the playoffs but if we make it into the playoffs this year that would be awesome obviously playoffs would be the start of next episode but we're more likely going to have another offseason ahead of us but we are getting very close to being a playoff team and I think the main thing that needs to be changed pretty much with our team is our pitching rotation obviously that will get much better once we get younger guys into the lineup from the uh, system. So I think we're definitely very close to being a playoff team. Like in the next one to two seasons, I can see us making it as a wild card team. As long as we keep this team as much together as possible. So there is that. Let's get into simulating the rest of the season and seeing what happens. We're going to start off by following the double A and the triple A season. And hopefully double and triple A have a good rest of their year as well. So we'll go all the way up to... Actually, let's do the one month at a time thing. Let's take a look at the MLB first for this one month, and then we'll go over to double and triple. Just because, obviously, the MLB team could make it into the postseason, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Brian Morris has been injured immediately to start this episode, so that is not great. He's out for two to three months. So... Um, Let's go auto on that for a second. And oh my goodness. Wow, we won multiple straight games. We are 500 now. Wow, we are trying to get into the playoffs this year, apparently. Um, I do think what I'm going to do because of that injury, because he's out for the rest of the year now, which is unfortunate. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... Uh, who was it? Yeah, I'm going to add Sammy Gomez, I think, to our 40-man roster. He's been really, really good in AAA this year. And I'm going to let him play the rest of the year because I want this team to maybe make the playoffs now because of this. Yeah, I think I'm going to add him to our 40-man and call him up. I think that's a good move for our team to do that. Give him a chance already. He would have been a September call-up probably already anyways. So let's get him in there and see what he's all about. Apparently Bobby Hyde is picking it up as of late too, so that's uh, good to see. Sucks that uh, Morris went down, but hopefully that's uh, a good sign for Gomez to get something done in the MLB. But we have literally won four straight games. We're 500. There is a chance we make the playoffs if the other teams fall off. We're five games back now. We just got to keep on trucking and make it into the playoffs. <laughs> if we make the playoffs this year, I'm going to be really surprised because I didn't expect to maybe make it by year 10, but we are just killing it randomly. So uh, let's... Uh, Go still to the end of the month and see if we string together some more wins. Uh, let's go auto fix rotation and triple A. That's okay. Oh, there's a lot of losses in a row. Now we're probably not going to make it because of that. But we're still winning a good amount. And now we have another major injury. It's Bill Pineda. So yeah, we're not going to make it because of these injuries. He's out for uh, two to three months. So let me go to... Eh... Auto on this, I guess, because it will probably put uh, Mick uh, Donald or whatever his last name is. O'Donnell, not McDonald. What am I saying? O'Donnell into the lineup. So let's just go auto on that. Let me actually go back. Let me adjust this myself because this is more important, probably. 
I just don't want the roster to get randomly set up randomly uh, bad. So O'Donnell's into the lineup now. That's good. And the other part he was already in, so that's good. That is good. Let's continue to simulate to the end of the month, but yeah, we fell off a little bit. But 62 and 68, I'm still very proud of this team. Even over, oh, yeah, we're not going to make the playoffs because these injuries hitting us. And there's another kind of major injury, but it's not a guy that's going to make it to the MLB eventually. So we're just getting slapped with career, like one to two month long injuries here. 64 and 75, yeah, we definitely fell off a lot. We're now 26 games back of uh, the lead league, our league lead in our division. And yeah, we're 10 and a half games back. Yeah, we're not making the playoffs, but I am okay with that. I think we're definitely on the cusp of making it though. Let's uh, see what Double uh, A finishes off the season like, and we'll take a look at their player stats, and we'll get through Triple A's and see their player stats, and then we will get uh, to the off season stuff once we're done the MLB season. But we do got to call up three players, so let's see who do we want to call up that's on our forty man roster. I think we'll probably call up Montero because Montero he's not going to really be anything anyways. I could call up Guzman. Um, Silva is also under 40, man. I'm going to call it Montero for sure. Yeah, we'll move Montero for sure. Um, uh, no, not Ray, not Josh. We'll call up, but uh, we'll call up some of the bad players because we know we're not going to make the playoffs, so we might as well kind of fall or make ourselves fall off a little bit. So we'll call up those guys, and now we're up to 28. That's good. And let's see what, uh, double A finishes like. Let's auto fix Triple A's lineup. Uh, auto fix that. Wow, our uh, Double A team all of a sudden went really good near the end. Twenty nine and forty for them this season. Let's take a look at these Double A stats, and hopefully Double A had a good year. So let's uh, go over to Double A. So Tim Soto, four ERA, a one point four three WHIP, twenty one games or twenty eight games started, twenty one quality starts. That's phenomenal. That's exactly what we need from Tim Soto. So good stuff from Soto. Delmon Rangel. Uh, I believe he was getting used more as a reliever. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was getting used as a reliever. So we won't have the quality starts. But 3.61 ERA and a 1.33 whip is decent. It's up to a 69 overall at 22. Uh, then we head down to uh, Fernando Cora. 5-13 and 13 with a 3.11 ERA and a 1.32 whip. He started 28 games as well and had 20 quality starts. That's also really good. Some good starting pitching in Double A. It seems like Ron Francisco, 8 and 13 with a 4.65 ERA and a 1.51 WHIP. A little bit high on those things, but 27 games started and 11 quality starts. Probably one of the worst players down there in terms of pitching, but still decent. Uh, Carlos Mario, 3.43 ERA and a 1.24 WHIP, 8 and 9 record. Uh, started 28 games, had 20 quality starts. That's three players with 20-plus uh, quality starts. I like it. Uh, Manny Cologne, 7-12 with a 439 ERA and a 1.59 or 58 whip, 7-12. 27 games started and 12 quality starts. Not bad, considering that's his first season. Uh, Todd Davies was batting a 215. Not really that good. Four home runs, 27 RBIs, 18 steals. Yeah, not really sold on his stats this season. Uh, Kasuki Kobayashi, one of our better prospects, only batted a 218 this year, but had 12 home runs and 54 RBIs. He is developing, which is good. 606 OPS wise. Eh. Uh, Segura was doing terrible again. Yeah, this guy's going to keep on going down in potential, likely. And he just fractured his foot. He's not going to make the MLB. There's no way. A 199 average. Not good. Uh, then we head down to Spencer Ono. 233. He was used more as a bench option, it looks like. Eh. Castellano was fantastic. Jose Castellano deserves an upgrade for sure. A 290 average. Yeah, Jose Castellano is really solid. His contact is really good as well. Yeah, he's almost like a Cardenas in the outfield, it seems like, right now. Uh, Jesus Cruz, a 238, probably also used more as a bench option. Eh. And then Julio Hernandez was not good, a 204. 
which is not great considering he's also an A potential player. So there is double A. Let's get triple A done. See how they finish off their season. They are not doing too well, unfortunately. Uh, we'll go auto on Bobby Hyde in the MLB. We'll take a look at that later. He's back already. That's good. 49 and 101 for the double A season. Let's take a look at double, or not double A season, the triple A season. <laughs> uh, Guzman as a reliever, 295 ERA, 1.03 whip. Pretty solid. Then again, he is a closer. 28 saves. Uh, Pablo Silva, 5 and 15, not the best stat wise, but he was developing. 30 games started and 7 quality starts. Yeah, Silva, not so good this year for an A potential player. He definitely probably, I'd say, gets dropped off a little bit, but he should be in the majors next year, which is good. Or maybe close to it. Uh, Sparbori, let's see, 29 games started. 14 quality starts, okay. He's getting close to being MLB ready as well. Ray McMahon was good this year. Again, he is definitely getting close to being in the MLB. Or he probably should already with that contact hitting, but 73 overall at 24. Great batting average. Solid OPS. Not an insane amount of RBIs and home runs, but still. Now we got to take a look at our youngster in Carmen Osuna. He was getting used as a reliever more at the beginning but he started 17 games this year seven quality starts not the best year for him but he is at least developing and he should be in the majors soon i would hope <laughs> concerning he's uh the future of this team with garth howe for sure uh kenny olager had a good year it looks like 30 games started and 16 quality starts i'd say he had a solid year uh, Josh Groves, a 220 average, not really that great, but he is developing. He is also pretty close to being ready for the majors, I'd say. Uh, Brad Thornton was not good, so Thornton's probably going to get demoted. He is a good power hitter, though. He's a really good power hitter. Like, even though he's a 69 seed potential, like, this guy might have major league upside because of that power hitting. Yeah, he might be a power hitter for the MLB at some stage. I might just randomly use him as an MLB catcher at some stage. Just because might as well see how good that power hitting is. Because he should be a guy that hits home runs for sure. But that average is not that good. Because, yeah, vision and discipline, not very good. He needs to be much better at those, I think. Kellenberger, solid. Uh, Michael Chu, pretty solid as well. He's getting closer to being MLB ready too. A couple years still, probably. Uh, Norman Pena, really solid as a relief pitcher. Pete Taveras as well, really solid as a relief pitcher. Uh, William Helpern, eh, not sold on him. Not sold on him at all. Ponce, eh, solid. Uh, Rafael Rodriguez, eh, it's okay. It's not terrible, and that's triple A. Now let's get our MLB season done, and I'm excited to see how we finish off this year. Very excited. We got uh, these last two series, Houston and Seattle. Seattle's the best team in our division, so it's going to be tough to beat them, but let's see if we can get some wins here at the end of the year. And now Steiner's been injured for a few days. Auto on that. He's back again. That's good. And we did lose the last three games of the season, but we finished 74 and 88, which is definitely our best season yet. We do have some award winners and some league leaders, so we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But I'd say a very good year for this team. That's definitely a good year. Our offense was really good. The runs allowed, though, absolutely terrible. So once we get young pitchers in, that'll be good. But we had a 41-40 and 40 record on home uh, field, which is nice. We are really bad on the road, though. And we were much better at night games than day games. But, yeah, we finished 12 games back of a wild card spot. Definitely much better than expected. Well, not really, I'd say, because we're a good contact team, but still. Okay, let's take a look at our player stats on our team. So I'll go through this screen instead because this screen's a lot easier. So starting off with our pitchers. Gary actually led us in wins. Then it was Garth Howe. Todd Goss as a relief pitcher up there, which is interesting. Morris, who got injured. Lake doesn't really matter too much about the win count, though. We're looking at ERA and all that stuff. Um, so, 
Um, Ken Robert was really good in terms of being a reliever this year. Yeah, he was really good. He's like a setup guy. And yeah, I do really like uh, Ken Roberts' play this year. Dennis Lake as a reliever was phenomenal as usual. Low ERA, very low whip, and very solid FIP too. So good stuff from Dennis. Garth Howe. Um, is he a Cy Young caliber player? Probably not this year. But uh, his ERA was worse than last year, but the whip was better. The war was a little bit worse. The FIP was really good. Uh, hopefully Garth uh, gets a Cy Young soon, though. Uh, Troy Bacon was actually a lot better than he should be. But he is going to probably retire soon. Not that it matters because we didn't draft him. Rubel was... Eh, in terms of ERA and whip. Uh, Gary McAllister. Not so sold on a lot of these other guys in their stats. We'll take a look at FIP and stuff too. Sammy Gomez was terrible up here. Maybe I shouldn't have called him up yet, but oh well. I wanted him to get a little bit of taste of action, so that's okay. And yeah, Bobby Hyde wasn't good either. Yeah, Bobby Hyde is probably going to be used more as a relief pitcher for sure. Um, Let's go to FIP. See this. So Ruble is actually really good in terms of FIP at least. Lake was good. Garth Howe obviously good in FIP. Ken Robert good in FIP. And everybody else was kind of eh, solid, I guess, for McAllister. Not terrible. The really bad ones, though, obviously were Gomez. High definitely improved that FIP a lot, it looks like. So there's that. Let's take a look at our players, uh, like in terms of our hitters. So uh, Cuero batted at 257 this year, 18 home runs, 74 RBIs. Solid. Solid indeed. I don't know if he's he's probably going to want to go to free agency. We didn't draft this guy, but he's probably going to want to go to free agency, which means Sixto might be the catcher next year. We head to first baseman. Ozzy batted a 300 this year, 25 home runs, so he does hit at least 20 home runs, and 111 RBIs. I love Ozzy. That uh, was his best batting average in quite some time. OPS is a little bit lower than last year, but Ozzy is the man, and we already know that he is, so good stuff from Ozzy. We had to second base. Trevino batted at 291, so that dropped off a little bit. His potential dropped to a B. Or wait, wasn't he was never an A potential player, though. I thought he was always B potential. Unless we jumped him up to an A potential, and then he jumped back down to a B. I don't know why he fell off. But he had a good year. Yeah, he definitely had a good year. We had to third base. Pip batted to 232. 20 home runs for Pip this year. And this was Pip's best year of his career. So he's at least improving that wise. Average, not so much. But he's still doing something, at least at the major league level. Uh, Steve Schneider off the bench. Seems to be an okay player off the bench. Not a phenomenal player by any standards, but still an okay player off the bench. Um, shortstop wise, Pinero had 16 home runs and 72 RBIs at 255, so a little bit less than last year. The average is definitely not as good as last year, but still, putting up similar numbers, so that's decent. Uh, we head to Gary Steiner, who had almost 100 RBIs this year. Big year for Gary. Big year for Gary. Best in home runs and RBI wise. Average was much better than last year. Yeah, this was a good year for Gary. Uh, Sixto, oh my goodness, yeah, I think Sixto might have won you know, some awards, for sure. A 330 average with 30 home runs and 98 RBIs. He doesn't hit 100 RBIs, which is a surprise. Um, but what a year for Giancarlo. What a year. I might do the offseason next episode instead. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might start doing offseasons on their own episodes. I think I'm going to do that, actually. I know I just randomly decided that uh, in this ep in late in this episode, but I think I, it's just because I don't want these episodes being like an hour long. So the off season will be all next episode, and then we'll get more into because we're starting to becoming a contending team. So I want to take a look at player stats a little bit more depth wise. But the best year of his career in terms of home runs and RBIs for Giancarlo, the average is the best of his career over one in terms of the OPS. This is why this guy was extended for what he was. Uh, yeah, obviously he's making a lot of money still, but 
Yeah, I am glad we decided to keep on to Sixto as much as possible. Center fielders, Ollie Gelman at 227. And that's a big drop off from last year. That is a big drop off. Yeah, I'm not really sold on that, but what about his like stealing and his doubles and stuff? 17 stolen bases. Uh, 22 doubles. Solid. Bill Pineda batted at 228, but he is developing quite nicely. Obviously, he got injured near the end of the year. Yeah, he's been solid for sure. Um, then we head to right fielders Bill O'Donnell at 225. Not a great year for Bill. I mean, he was used more as a depth player. It wasn't a terrible season by any standard, but it wasn't a great one either. His war has never been positive. So there is our players for the season. Yeah, I, I definitely think I'm going to start doing off seasons as their own episodes just because we're at this point where we need to actually focus heavily more on the team. And I just uh, obviously want to make these episodes like at least like at, at the most like 30 something minutes. So don't want this to be too long. But we will still see who ends up winning the World Series this episode likely. Okay, so now that that is done, I do want to also take a look at team rankings. So, where did we finish in terms of some of the stats? We fell off a little batting average-wise. We finished 18. Uh, runs, we were 13. Hit-wise, we were 19th. We're probably up there in doubles and triples, though, right? 13th in doubles. Triple-wise, we were tied for 8th. Home run-wise, we're probably down low. Because we're a contact-hitting team, mostly. But it seems like Sixto is definitely finding that power. Yeah, we're 25th. Runs batted in wise. Not that this is important. Well, it is important. 13th. Stolen bases. We are tied for first with the uh, with the Royals. So we are a very fast team. Um, stolen base percentage. We are fifth. Are tied for fourth technically with a 7.25 average. Um. A lot of these other stats don't matter too much, but um, ERA-wise, curious on that. How good was our pitching this year? Not good enough. Yeah, we're 26. See, once we get the younger guys in, we'll definitely improve in terms of pitching, I think. Because we do have a lot of guys in the system coming up, but once that pitching rotation you know, like gets into the 80s and stuff like that, we're going to be a really solid team. So that's all of that. Let's take a look at the league leaders now. So, John Carlos Sixto led the league in runs with 112. He also led in on base percentage with a 1.05, so that's OBP. And he also led the league in war with a 9 war. Damn. He was second best in batting average this year behind Wander Franco, who batted at 337. Jeez. Well, Sixto is a monster. And yeah, that power hitting is definitely getting better, especially against right-handers. He's not as good against left-handers, but still he is good against them too with contact-wise. So yeah, I hope that uh, we could get uh, Sixto to keep getting that power game better because if he gets a lot of home runs and stuff like that, this guy's going to be an absolute unit for years and years to come, I'd say. Uh, let's just scroll through this, see if anybody else was up there in terms of anything. Ozzy was up there in RBIs, finished second behind Nolan Gorman. Sixto was number seven, tied with Austin Charles. And then, yeah, there's the runs for Sixto. Uh, Trevino was up there in stolen bases, but he was 15 behind this Ezra Beltran guy who seems to steal a lot of bases. Almost uh, 10 more than the next closest. Um, anybody else up there in terms of things? Base on balls, Sixto was up there, so he's drawing some walks. Yeah, you love to see it. Sixto is... A monster <laughs> by a long shot. Um, anybody up there in terms of pitching stats? Let's see. Garth Howe was up there in ERA 16, which is pretty damn good. Complete games. Yeah, Gary's always up there in complete games, which is kind of cool. He always pitches the most innings, too. Um, Garth was number one in walks allowed, so he does not allow a lot of walks. And he was number three in whip. 
Eventually, we're going to have like a Cy Young winner and a batting winner at the same time, I think. Garth was number six in pitching war. Nice. And then, yeah, six to obviously number one in batting war. Um, so there is that. Let's take a look at our award winners. And then I think that'll be almost it for this episode. Because like I said, I do want to make off-seasons their own episodes now that we're becoming a good team. Because obviously off-seasons are going to take a little bit more work in the future. Because we're going to be wanting to focus heavily on keeping our team together. Rather than just signing everybody and uh, getting to the next season right away. Right? Let me actually go to the Players of the Month as well. I want to see if anybody was a Player of the Month for us. Which it does not look like it, which is a major surprise that Sixo never was a player of the month based on his stats. Let's see those awards though. So Sixto has won the Hank Aaron, and that's the only award we got this season. So that's kind of cool though. At least he got a major award. But in terms of MVP, Nolan Gorman this year for Seattle at 42 home runs. Jeez. They also have Devers in Seattle too. No wonder Seattle's really good. Uh, Cy Young this year going to Dustin May. Nobody up there for us in terms of that, though. The batting title, Sixto finished number two behind Wander Franco. So very close for Sixto. I don't know why he didn't get it. I guess it's because of the batting average. Yeah, so oh, it is to the highest batting average. If uh, Wander Franco wasn't in uh, the uh, AL, then uh, Sixto definitely would have won it. Because that average is much better than Tamar Johnson. And the... Uh, but yeah, Sixto had a much better year, I'd say, because he had more home runs, more RBIs, but it's just that average. Um, Manuel Clace, the reliever of the year. Justin Sanchez, rookie of the year. Wow, this guy's developing nicely, and he's got crazy contact hitting. No wonder he's doing good. Sixto, though, with the Hank Aaron for the first time in his career, so shout out to Sixto. Um, Forbes, the Golden Gloves. These ones I'm just going to skim through a little bit more. Car uh, Ozzy Cardenas gets a Golden Glove for first base for the first time, I believe, in his career, or maybe the second time, but good to see Ozzy getting another award to add to his uh, his trophy case. Um, there you go. Giancarlo gets another Golden Glove. Love to see it. Anybody else up there? Steiner was up there for a Silver Slugger for DHs, but he didn't get it. Cuero was up there for a silver slugger for catchers, but didn't get it. Ozzy gets a silver slugger for first base. And what else we got here? Sixto gets a silver slugger for the outfield. Not a surprise. And that's that. So uh, quite a bit of, I'd say, awards in that sense, which is good. Final thing we're going to do to end this episode is we're going to simulate to see who ends up winning the World Series. And then... Next episode, like I said, will be the entire offseason, and we'll figure out what to do with this team a little bit more contract-wise. So let's uh, see who ends up winning the World Series this year. It's going to be the Giants beating the Blue Jays in 2032. Let's take a look at those playoff awards. Um, so Marco Luciano won the World Series MVP. This guy's dropping off a little bit, but still really good uh, World Series for him. And then we had Austin Charles and Diego Cartia as the postseason MVPs. So let's uh, go to Sim to offseason. We'll get to the retirements and stuff, I guess, as well. So we can get to set up this offseason a little bit more. Got that. We did lose one player to retirement. And it was a guy I never drafted. So it doesn't really matter too much. Those are the Hall of Famers. Altuve and Arenado. And the final thing, this is where I'm going to leave it on for next episode. We do got some exclusive free agent signings. So, Cuero is the, one of the big ones. Uh, he wants a lot of money. We could give him it for one year while we wait for uh, six, uh, to use Sixto as a catcher. Or we could use Sixto as a catcher right away. Because we do got a lot of other outfielders we could use too. So, I will leave it on that. Do we sign Cuero? Ollie Gelman, we could sign him, but his asking price, I'd say, is a little bit on the high side. The lowest we're able to get him for is likely around 8.6. We could definitely want to keep him around, obviously, because if we lose him, then we're losing our depth a bit more, but it is a bit on the pricey side. The other guys, I don't know if they'll all come back or not. And... And then in terms of staff-wise, we're needing a new manager, a new first base, and a new third base coach. So we definitely probably want to go for somebody really good. So 
this is Bar's a guy, for example. I would probably throw in an offer for him, likely, as their manager. First base, coach-wise, we'll probably end up finding somebody also with some positives, but we definitely want to find some good ones for uh, these uh, type of spots because obviously we're now in a team that could make it to the playoffs, so we want to be signing some good uh, staff members. But we usually try and do that anyways. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much it. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I'll just basically skim through this a little bit again, just so you guys can kind of see what our roster is looking like potentially for next season as well. But yeah, this episode is obviously way too long at this point, so that's why I am just shutting it down. And uh, this is just a um, rest of the season episode instead. So there we go. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Vancouver Ring Draft the Glory franchise mode. So in next episode, we'll have the entire offseason, and we'll see what we're looking at for potentially for next season. But this team might be very close to making it to the playoffs. So I just think that below, and I'll see you guys next time.